It's 4.30 and this is WKYT This Morning. We are learning new details about the man who killed 49 people at an Orlando nightclub over the weekend. Our team coverage continues just ahead. We've also learned that one of the 49 victims in that massacre had ties to Kentucky. We'll find out more about that man coming up. Also this morning, after the attack, police say this year's Pride Festival in Lexington will be the safest one yet. What they're planning, ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT, June 14th. Welcome in on your Tuesday. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's check out what's happening in the weather department first with Micah. Yeah, things are looking pretty good outside. We're really not seeing much go on as we really track throughout the morning hours. So here's the breakdown. Pretty pleasant start. By 8 a.m., you'll see a lot of sunshine. And you'll have mostly sunny skies throughout much of your day. Now, as you get into the afternoon, we will have a couple of rumbles of thunder. As that system gets a little bit closer to us, that warm front is scooting in from the south and southwest. So most of this action is mainly going to be in the western sky. Temperatures, however, for the rest of us, right around 90 degrees. And what we're going to be talking about the next few days, those thunderstorms increasing and that severe weather threat increasing. And I'm going to talk all about that coming up in just about 10 minutes. And we'll see you then. Thank you. Some who knew him said that he was hateful. Others called him erratic. New details are emerging about a man who killed 49 people in an attack at a gay nightclub in Orlando. It is the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. We're also learning more about some heroic actions that saved some lives during this brutal attack. Greg Boswell begins our team coverage. Social media captured the party at the Orlando nightclub and the moment it all changed. Those were also the last moments of 25-year-old Amanda Alvier's life. She was one of 49 victims killed when gunman Omar Mateen opened fire early Sunday morning. Investigators combed the area around Pulse nightclub Monday. The FBI also searched the suspect's home and electronic devices, tracing his words and actions in recent weeks. So far, we see no indication that this was a plot directed from outside the United States. Mateen swore allegiance to ISIS and, according to his father, was a homophobe. He purchased his guns legally and passed a background check. He's evil. We happen to be the gun store he picked. Um, and there's nothing else I can say. The Orlando Police Department says 11 officers fired at Mateen, ultimately killing him. But there were other heroes that night, too. There was only one choice. Club bouncer and Marine veteran Imran Youssef recognized the sound of Mateen's automatic weapon and unlatched a door to free dozens of trapped club goers. I wish I could save more, to be honest. There's a, There's a lot of people that are dead. Mourners and community members gathered less than two miles from the scene of the crime for one of many vigils and rallies around the country. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Orlando. Well, we've also learned that one of the 49 victims of the attack has ties to central Kentucky. Friends say 29-year-old Daryl Burt lived in Georgetown during part of his childhood. In recent years, he's lived in Jacksonville, Florida, but hours before Burt was shot at Pulse Nightclub in Orlando, he graduated with his master's degree. Monique Blair continues our team coverage. Today, we also learned Bert spent several of his younger years growing up in Georgetown. A Georgetown pastor told us Bert came from a really good family, a family that was very active in church. Until Sunday, Bert worked at Kaiser University in Jacksonville as a financial aid officer, working with the school's military students. University President Lisa Murray Winslow says everyone at the school is still trying to come to grips that one of their own was a victim in the Orlando shooting. Unbelievable. Winslow says she learned of Bert's death Monday morning, and the news quickly had a ripple effect across campus. Um, we've got grief counselors, and uh, we're, we're handling this as best as possible. There's no script for it. Bert was also a member of the Jacksonville Jaycees, a group that, according to its Facebook page, is dedicated to fun and community service. The organization posted on Facebook saying it would hold a moment of silence for Bert during their meeting Monday night. It's a community as a whole that's grieving and going through this, dealing with the shock and the aftermath. Well, a spokesperson for the Burt family in Kentucky says his mom and dad are simply asking for prayers right now. 
Many people in central Kentucky are paying tribute to all 49 victims of the Orlando attack. Last night in Richmond, St. Mark Catholic Church held a special mass to honor them. And as Garrett Weimer reports now, the church invited people of all faiths to attend. The Paschal candle sits at the altar from Easter until Pentecost. Other than that, only for baptisms and funerals. It was lit on Monday night. Those women and men who were mowed down on Sunday morning were all, all made in the image and likeness of the God we profess. They read the names of lives lost in Orlando, prayed for family members left behind. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. From the pulpit, Father Jim said if certain steps aren't taken, there will be more senseless tragedies like the shooting in Orlando. Among those steps, Father Jim called for a ban on assault weapons like the AR-15 used in Sunday slaughter. My prayer today is that God will have mercy on America. More than six dozen people showed up to stand united with Orlando. I'm an American and I refuse to be intimidated by fanatics. The service ended by singing words so fitting at a time like this. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. In Richmond, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And the University of Kentucky will hold a memorial service for the victims tomorrow afternoon that will begin at noon at the VIP Center in Frazee Hall. Because of the Orlando attack, Lexington police have, will have extra officers on hand during the city's Pride Festival later this month. Organizers of the Pride Festival say they met with police yesterday to go over security plans. They expect 25,000 people to attend the festival. And they say with extra police officers providing security, this would be the safest Pride Festival ever. People need to come out, not just LGBT people, but allies and the rest of the community need to come out and show that this community is supportive of everybody and that this community stands up for what's right. The Pride Festival will be held on Saturday, June 25th on the grounds of the Fayette County Courthouse. Presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have very different opinions about what should be done in response to the attack in Orlando. Both of them addressed the situation yesterday. They presented different approaches on counterterrorism and gun control. Trump again said he wants to ban foreign born Muslims from entering the U.S., while Clinton said the government needs to work with Muslim Americans to stop lone wolf attacks. The only reason the killer was in America in the first place was because we allowed his family to come here. We should be intensifying contacts in those communities, not scapegoating or isolating them. Well, Trump said his campaign is revoking credentials provided to the Washington Post for a headline suggesting that he felt President Obama was connected to the Orlando attack. He called the newspaper, quote, phony and dishonest. The Washington Post said last night that it has covered the Trump campaign honestly and accurately. Kentucky lawmakers in Washington are also talking about the Orlando attacks. From the Senate floor yesterday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the country is supporting the victims and their families. And 6th District Congressman Andy Barr says he wants the country to focus on fighting the Islamic State and not gun control. If it wasn't an AR-15, it would have been a bomb that this man strapped to his chest and walked into this um, and, to, and killed these innocent people. We grieve for the victims, and we say this to their families and to Orlando. You're not alone. Your nation is here with you, and we won't back down in the face of terrorism. Senator Bob Casey, a Democrat from Pennsylvania, has introduced new legislation that would keep guns out of the hands of those who commit criminal acts based on hate. And keep checking our website at WKYT.com for updates on the Orlando nightclub attack. You'll also find them on our WKYT News app. And CBS This Morning will be live from Orlando later on this morning starting at 7. Well, WKYT This Morning is just getting started here on your Tuesday. And it's good to have you with us. It's coming up on 440. Modern and traditional flower arrangements sure to impress. Coming up on Moms Every Day This Morning. 
steamy conditions slide back into the forecast and not only that but a storm threat as well. We're going to get into that coming up next. Now your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a really nice start to the day. There's nothing out there early this morning as you're walking out the door. So a nice start, nice feel. We'll take that. Defender Radar Network, look at the clouds up toward Indiana and back toward Illinois. You'll actually see most of those stay there as we go through the day. Uh, through the day, most of us actually stay dry. And I don't see a great rain chance today. However, there is a rain chance. So there will be some of us actually picking up a little rain today. And I'll show you exactly where I expect that coming up in a few minutes. Uh, but the look around the region, yeah, roadways look pretty good. I'm not seeing much of an issue. Temperatures are there in the mid 60s right now. We'll finish off low to mid 60s. So pretty decent start to the day. Then we get through your afternoon. Afternoon right around 90 degrees. Now it's not going to be your 90 like we had this weekend because this weekend dew points were in the mid 60s and even some in the upper 60s, meaning there was a lot of moisture in the air. It just didn't feel that great. But today we actually have dew points in the mid to upper 50s. So it's still not extremely dry air like we had yesterday. Actually felt quite nice toward the afternoon. But it's still drier from this weekend. So 90 degrees will feel a little bit different from this weekend. It's still, don't get me wrong, still very warm. But there is that chance of rain in towards your afternoon. I'd say anywhere from 2 p.m. to about 8 p.m. is your best bet. And that's going to be west of I-75. So get off toward uh, the BG Parkway. Go closer toward I-65. And that is your best chance of rain. Not your only chance, but your best chance. And then we glide off through the night and into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning we'll wake up with a small chance of rain. I just can't rule it out. But most of the activity actually comes during the afternoon tomorrow. And that will give us that slight chance at seeing a few strong to maybe even severe cells. This will be a first alert severe weather day to, uh, for tomorrow. So just keep in mind that we're going to be watching some of these cells move on through. Even if you don't get a severe cell over you, it's, it's highly likely you'll at least get a strong cell, which means heavy downpours, a lot of lightning, and some strong wind gusts. But the best opportunity is the farther back toward the west and to the northwest. That's the best chance for those. However, you're still looking at least a marginal risk down toward the southeast. So everyone at least has that chance. It's just the best opportunity is the farther west and northwest you go. Let's talk about your seven day forecast. Most of that is west today. It's 30%. It's mainly about the temperatures today. Uh, Wednesday, that's what I was talking about. Those strong to potentially severe storms. That's the day to watch. On Thursday, we'll have an early chance at a couple of showers, especially for eastern Kentucky. And then once that blows through, guys, it really knocks down the temperatures. The feeling outside will drop big time. You're talking about fantastic weather your Friday and off into your weekend. It looks really good then, but Wednesday's the day to watch for sure. Well, as long as that weekend's okay. Yeah, hey. the weekend looks good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really going to have to keep watch tomorrow, those That's potentially right. strong storms. Thank you, Mike. It's 445. A beautiful vase of flowers can brighten up your day and your room. In Mom's Everyday Minute, we have a couple of ways to arrange tulips. Hi, I'm Andrew Skipper, your local lifestyle expert, and with spring here, that means it's time for spring flowers. Tulips are a favorite flower this time of year, and I'm going to show you a couple of easy ways that you can do to bring them into your house. First thing you want to do with tulips is give them a fresh cut, and then tulips like to have shallow water. You just want to make sure that the bottom of the stem is in the water. Now for this arrangement, we're gonna do really modern look. I'm gonna do some tulips inside. And I like them inside the cylinder because it really makes it look modern and contemporary and kind of a fresh take on a floral arrangement. Now, with tulips, we've all seen them droop a little bit too much and you don't want them looking like they're dying. So a trick to prevent them from drooping as they start to kind of bend over is to take just a little pin and just underneath where the bloom is, you just want to insert that pin and it just gives a little air bubble in the stem and within a few hours they will start to perk back up. Two easy and affordable ways to arrange tulips and yet completely different. One modern, one traditional. For Moms Every Day, I'm Andrew Skipper. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. The time is 447 now on WKYT. This morning, we have a lot more on the way. A man accused of shooting a Louisville police officer still on the run. We'll have more on that story just ahead on WKYT this morning. Welcome back. It's 450. 
A standoff at a Louisville home has ended with a man accused of shooting a police officer still on the run. Police surrounded a home yesterday afternoon thinking that Jaquan Crowley was inside. But just after 7 o'clock, police cleared the home and didn't see any sign of Crowley. Police say he shot Louisville police officer Kyle Carroll Saturday night. The officer was released from the hospital yesterday afternoon to continue his recovery at home. New this morning, deputies in Laro County are looking for three people in connection to a violent robbery that happened Friday night. Police say a teenager went to the home of a man she knew on Taylor Bridge Road. The man let her in, but police say a short time later, two other men showed up, shot the victim with his own gun, and then stole the gun and his wallet. Police say the teenager may have recently run away from home. We think that she was an underage juvenile that we've been attempting to locate for the past several weeks anyhow. Police say the shooting victim was airlifted to UK hospital. They say his injuries were not life threatening. A Lexington woman faces forgery and theft charges after police say she stole nearly $11,000 from a military surplus store in Nicholasville. Lexington police say 35 year old Monday Hensley sold small items to the infantry arms and surplus secondhand store. But before Hensley would cash the checks the store wrote to her, police say she changed the dollar amounts written on them. Police say the store owner didn't realize what was happening until Hensley tried to cash one check and it was denied because there was no money in the account. The easiest way to combat this type of activity is obviously to make sure that you are fully utilizing the details on the check itself. Uh, if you're writing an amount out, uh, make sure that you begin it at the beginning of the line itself and continuing on until the concluding portion of that line. Hensley now faces 10 felony charges. The Louisville Courier Journal has apologized for refusing to call Muhammad Ali by his name for years after he changed it. Ali was born Cassius Clay, but changed his name to Muhammad Ali in 1964 after adopting the Muslim faith. But the Courier Journal did not consistently refer to him as Muhammad Ali until 1970. In an editorial yesterday, the newspaper's executive editor said the paper's unwillingness to use Ali's name for years, quote, did little to help race relations in a turbulent time. Kentucky State Police have a fun week that is planned for some children in southern Kentucky. The annual Troopers Island Camp kicked off yesterday at Dale Hollow Lake in Clinton County. This is the 51st year for the camp, which gives less fortunate children from around the state a chance to spend a week doing outdoor activities. State Police say a lot of hard work and fundraising goes into planning the camp. Some of these kids have been taught to be afraid of the police, and we want to make sure that these kids, by the end of the week, are not afraid of us and they can talk to us and tell us, uh, you know, if something's bothering them or something's going on in their life and we, and we can help them. Police say 64 children are spending the week at Trooper Island. All right, hope they all have a safe and fun time. It's camp season. Yeah, coming right up, we'll have a look at some of the stories that we're working on for you right now. Also have another look at your morning forecast. It's time right now to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you. It's 456. One of the 49 Orlando shooting victims spent some of his childhood here in Kentucky. We'll have more about who he was coming up in our next half hour. Police are investigating an accident that happened early this morning at Wilson Downey and Lansdowne Drive. We have more details on the crash coming up on WKYT this morning. And should be a, a nice day ahead. We're watching tomorrow pretty carefully. Meteorologist Micah Harris is here. Yeah, and it's going to be a good looking day, no doubt about it. We're starting off in pleasant conditions, sitting at about 61 degrees there in Richmond and Madison County. A little bit cooler over toward the east because the warm air is slowly but surely inching its way back toward the east. So it's going to take some time, but you will feel it later on this afternoon as that warm front gets a little bit closer. I will say this the best chance for rain today, which is still relatively small, but the best chance is go I-75 and back toward the west, back toward 65 corridor. So your Bluegrass Parkway, your Cumberland Parkway, your 68, 127, 27, you all, you all have the better opportunity of actually seeing a, a small chance of rain later on this afternoon, but it's about the temperatures today still at 90 degrees. Tomorrow it's about the storms, that severe weather threat. We're going to go over that another two hours of WKYT News. So live look downtown. We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.